made for the a civilization, including the prefecture, the main body, and the conclusion. For the main body, also including four chapters, which are the harmonious between nature, humans and nature, and the protection of biodiversity, and also improve the a governance of biodiversity, and also the cooperation around the globe to protect biodiversity. And the white paper is available in Chinese, English, in total eight languages. And released by the People's Publish and the A Foreign Language Publish, and available in Xinhua Bookstore. In order to let you know more details about this white paper, today we have invited Mr. Zhao Yingming, White Minister of Ecology and Environment, Mr. Zhang Zhanghai, Chief Engineer and Spokesperson of Ministry of National Resources, Mr. Li Chunliang, Vice Administrator of National Forestry and Grassland Administration, to give you more details about this white paper and answer some of your questions. Uh, first, I give the floor to Mr. Zhao. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, friends from the media, good morning. I'm very delighted to take this opportunity to brief you on the just released white paper on biodiversity conservation in China. First of all, I would like to express our sincere gratitude to all the friends from media for your long-term concern and support to our work. Biodiversity has provided a vast resources for us in terms of production, a safety living environment, and a beautiful a, a landscape, as well as culture and civilization, which are the a key foundation for us to live and also related to people's well-being. The theme of the a biodiversity in one year is a biodiversity is our life. which vividly demonstrates that the relationship between human beings and the biodiversity and emphasizing the importance of protecting biodiversity. With the growing number of popularity as well as the a growing scale of economy, the biodiversity right now is facing a big threat May 2019, UN released a document saying that human activities change 75% of the land environment and the 66% of marine environment. One fourth of biodiversity face distinction risks. And last year, and the outlook on biodiversity also mentioned that also we have seen the active improvement in biodiversity protection, but rate still face a severe challenges. The total environment still weakening. China with a large larger scale and the complex the landscape which gave the birth to the a rich species of animals, plants and is one of the a, countries with this richest biodiversity. And China's rich conservation also laid the, a solid foundation for us to protect the biodiversity in a smart manner. As one of the a, earliest the a signature of the document, China has always actively in protect the biodiversity conservation. Um, we have seen the a key progress made in this regard embarking a Chinese way to protect biodiversity. The white paper released this time gave the full picture and under the guidance of Xi Jinping's conservation. And we uh, keep abreast with the times and strengthen our protection on biodiversity. And from four areas, we talk about how we can better deal with our 
harmonious relationship with the nature, and how we can make sure that biodiversity conservation can be sustainable. COP15 will be very soon convened in Kunming, China, and the U and the 2030 agenda for sustainable de for sustainable development also come to the critical stage. China right now also embark on a new journey to fully build a modern socialist country. After finishing building a prosperous society in all respects, and we are standing at a new crossroad. Therefore, under this circumstance, the white paper is aimed to introduce China's way and practice and experience on biodiversity conservation and also provide the reference and also provide China's wisdom to the global cooperation. Therefore, it was big practical importance going forward that the whole countries to work together in this regard, and China will continue to improve its way in terms of the biodiversity conservation and working with all other parties to lay out new strategies and also conduct a post-2020 biodiversity roadmap, which also should fit our respective strands. And this is my remarks. Now the floor is open. Please identify your media affiliate before raising questions. CMG CCTV. The white paper on biodiversity conservation in China is the first of its kind in terms of biodiversity protection. And very soon, we will also see the COP15 will be kicked off in Kunming. And would you please elaborate more about the significance of releasing this document? Thank you for your question. As I mentioned, and China is one of the countries with richest biodiversity and also the one of the earliest signature in the a UN document. China has always touched great importance in biodiversity conservation while adopting a concept aligned with the times. And we have the a always eye on the green development while strengthening our rule of law and also the legal framework in order to build up a advanced biodiversity protection capability. And that is why we have seen a progress made in this regard, embarking a Chinese way to protect biodiversity. With COP15, Very soon, convening in Yunnan in China, we released this white document to introduce China's the, a philosophy practice of biodiversity conservation in China, and this has great significance in four following areas. First, in a format of white paper, give a full introduction regarding the endeavors in biodiversity conservation in China. As one of the eight key important content in the high quality development, biodiversity actually embedded in the every aspects of our economic and social development, allocating resources across the board to protect the environment and biodiversity. This is the very first white paper in its kind. In itself, it emphasized that China's practical action with landmark significance. And second, we talk about the philosophy, the approaches, and achievements in biodiversity conservation, and China's contribution in this regard as well. In white paper, we 
emphasize that, that China's philosophy is to create a harmonious environment between human and nature, improve the government's governance of biodiversity conservation, and strengthening the international exchanges and communication in this regard. Showing the world uh, China's responsibility and resolve as a major country and China's confidence and claim in protecting environment with global cooperation. And we also provide the experience and China's wisdom in order to build a community for all. And China always might protect and also advocate the biodiversity conservation. And in light of COP15, I would like to release this white document to introduce China's experience in this regard, to enhance global governance on biodiversity, and also build up confidence in dealing with climate change and the uh, disasters. And also would like to foster a synergy to build the a global governance to deal with biodiversity. And also would like to play an active role in fostering a biodiversity governance progress and benefits for all. Biodiversity provided the, a significant material foundation for us to live with, and it is one, everyone's responsibility and every agency's responsibility to protect the biodiversity. And taking this opportunity by releasing this white paper, we would like to make forward our efforts in this regard and also draw everyone's attention and invite everyone to pitch in to drive our endeavor. Thank you. Thank you. China National Radio and talk about this is closely rely, related to people's the, a well-being. I would please introduce about the a progress and we have done in this regard and going forward what kind of the a methods we would like to take to consolidate the progress we made. Thank you for your question. I did by Xi Jinping's thought on environmental conservation. China always championed the idea of the coexistence between nature and a human being. And we have a strengthened or the a capability in governing the biodiversity. And taking the opportunity, we would like to make sure we align with the time and also make sure that our system is complete and let the government take the leading role and will everyone pitching in to create the synergy. And we have seen a key achievements made in this regard. The white paper had a systematic approach to introduce in four areas, including 10 sectors about our progress. First, regarding the a regional production, so we would like to take the a national park as the way to protect the regional resources and also build up the a biodiversity conservation system. We also give it the priority on our work and playing a key role in protecting the key species. 90% of the land system and 71% of the a national key park in protecting wild animals and plants. Like we know, the panda, the a Asian, the elephants. Right now we've seen a growing number. And regarding the of situation conservation, 
and we have built a system and as the a complementary to the a regional protection and bring back the animals, and, well, animals and plants facing the a big challenge and risks. And also, we released the laws and regulations in order to have improved legal framework. And we also strengthen the law enforcement and also biosafety capability also improved. Of course, we also improve the environment quality, and we have launched a series of projects in restoring and repairing environment and covering the a mountains, land, desert, soil, grassland. We have seen a good momentum in this regard. Regarding the battle against pollution, it also mitigates the pressure and the burden on biodiversity conservation. And right now we could see that the a framework of biodiversity production was in place. And we also shift our way of economic social development, emphasizing the low carbon grain development. And also work together to drive the a great transition in the front industries and pushing forward the a rural revitalization and to realizing and discussing the way of marketing the rural products. And we also bring the a biodiversity conservation strategy as our national strategy and in a medium long term manner. And also emphasize the leadership in this regard. We also introduced the a world animal protection and environment laws. In total, 20 laws have been stipulated. And we also adjust the a protection a catalog of wild animal and plants and we also had the a evaluation system and also improved the a system of monitoring the a biodiversities and we have keep have been keeping investing in the a bell animal protection and we also strengthened the law enforcement emphasizing that the role and responsibility of the a key, the a legal, and also the authorities. And we also have hold people accountable in wrongdoing. And we also emphasize that each individual is important in this drive. We also take opportunity to educate the public so the governments make the leading role and the companies take the actual action and everyone involved and join the campaigns. So we have seen the different activities in place. Tens regarding the a global cooperation. And make sure that we give the help to the country needed in order to build a community shared future for mankind. Going forward, we will continue to build the asymmetric the approach to protect the a biodiversity and also make sure that our action plan be delivered. And also, we have the legal framework for enable us to do so. Regarding the action plans, and we would like to set up the a 10-year plan in protecting the biodiversity, giving priorities and improving the monitoring network, the data platform build up in order to improve our capability and of governance. 
九月发布的第五版全球生物多样性展望显示，二零一零年定下的二十个爱之目标实现。Can I use? In September 2020, we the a fifth outlook. That we are not doing enough. So we had a plan from 2010 to 2020 about a varsity goal. Last September, the Secretary issued this outlook, saying that although the different countries had their own action plan and the strategies, we have seen the a significant progress made. Unfortunately, we haven't seen the curve have been altered, which means we are still facing a big pressure. We talk about the lessons we learned. First, we talk about international goal that need ambition, but also should be practical, achievable. And the second, we also need the a guarantee conditions. Especially, we should give accommodate needs of developing countries in terms of capitals, resources, and talent. And third. All the contracting parties should work in alignment. In COP15, we'll talk about the A framework post-2020. First, we review the A previous journey. Therefore, for the A new, when we're setting the new goals, we should first draw lessons and experience in the previous actions. On one hand, we should boost the confidence of protecting biodiversity, but at the same time, we should ground ourselves in realities to set a feasible goal. While taking consideration of the countries and different capabilities and strengths, therefore, to set a reliable goals for the uh, next 10 years. And also, the goal should be transparent and also should be delivered by all the contracting parties. And that should emphasize the importance of the uh, technology transferring and financial supporting and in order to achieve a international governance on biodiversity. The international community should work together face squarely the a challenge about the a distinction of the animals and the a plants. China always realized the goals and for that 20 goals, three out of them are surpassing the setting goals and if 10 goals have seen the progress and four and deliver the milestone progress. The fifth outlook also emphasized many times China's contribution in biodiversity conservation. Going forward, we emphasize that the goal we have set 
and also establishing the alarming system and also to look at the implementation of the goals and also build up our capability to deliver all these goals. My question to the national, the nature resources. So my question regarding what kind of DA progress we have made, and what's your DA work arrangement going forward? Thank you for your question, the Ministry of Natural Resources. From the very beginning, we're focusing on the saving resources, restoring the available resources, and also repairing the resources. These only are key priorities in our working agenda. The biodiversity conservation is also one of our key goals, and we have done our jobs in two areas. First, in our planning part, we give the eight top places to biodiversity conservation. In 2020, NDRC, Ministry of Natural Resources, jointly published a document regarding the a master plans from 2011 to 2030 regarding the restoration of the national resources and including parks, natural parks, and the endangered animals and plants. In this master plan, we have laid out nine key projects for the seven tasks, 23 out of them related to biodiversity conservation. We take into full consideration about the a bigger picture and the a geographic connection as well as the sustainable development of economic and social sectors. So they lead a solid foundation for us to deliver the goals. And second, we have implemented a set of key projects. During the 13-5-year plan, the Ministry of Finance invested 50 billion in Changbai Mountain, and the Qing'an Mountains. We have 25 pilot projects to protect lands, mountains, grasses, and in key basins and regions, we have conducted projects regarding the leftover mines, covering 4 million mines. And regarding the marine resources, and we have different projects covering coastal zones and marine resources. We covered 1,200 kilometers of coastal zones and also a large area of coastal wetland. And this year we also started 10 projects of the restoration and repairing work, 15 marine resources re repairment projects. Going forward, Ministry of Natural Resources follow the master plan. And taking the goal of repairing the natural resources, and building up the ecological protective screens, uh, Tibet, and also out the a mountain areas and the coastal areas and the Yellow River places. 
and also practice all different projects regarding the a requirement resources and the scientific method in order to make contribution to the biodiversity conservation in China. China Daily. Forestry and Grassland Administration as one of the key authorities in biodiversity conservation. What have you done? Thank you for your question. A white paper release has showed the endeavors and the progress made over the years on biodiversity conservation. The National Forestry and Grassland Administration is also one of the key players in this regard. The biodiversity protection, we uh, worked on the A4 ecological system regarding forestry. We have conducted requirement restoration work and conducted the, a large project of the green projects, bring the a forest back. The natural forestry coverage has seen a big increase. In the past 30 years, we have seen a double digit growth in the a newly increased areas of forestry. In grassland area, we also focus on the repairing of uh, grass resources. And also, we return farmland to grassland. And also, the farmland quality we have seen the, a big improvement. During the 13th five year plan, we also conducted 53 white flying products. And the 201 National White Line Parks was opened. White Line protection rate reached above 50 percent. White Line system also seen the big progress. The water quality also improved. And we have seen the more the migrant birds take their home at these white lands. And regarding the sand management, we conduct a different ways for to deal with the desertification and also build the, a national park of a stony desertification. And this certification in China from an increasing number to a decreased number. Providing China's plan in dealing with desertification. Regarding the biodiversity, panda, the tiger, and the a, four, 15 endangered animals and plants as we are key products for the species protection have established 10,000 places to protect endangered animals and plants.
71% of the endangered animals and plants have been protected. Looking at the elk, the crested abyss have seen that from the a nearly zero number to a year-on-year -year growing number in that species. Regarding the genetic resources, we have captured more than 20,000 specimens of the uh, wild animals and the plants. We have established the a forest seed centers to restore more than 100,000 samples of the seeds. Regarding the seed for grassland, we also establish one the centers and also 60,000 samples of pasture. We have improved the a breeding center for wild animals, especially the endangered ones. Establish the different centers to protect the different the endangered animals, and also collected and stored the information, data, and samples of more than eight million. And going forward, we'll continue our endeavor and focusing on the breeding of the endangered wild animals and also protect the extinct animals and also protecting and also restoring the natural resources in order to make our contribution in the whole endeavor. Phoenix TV, a lot of researchers signed that the a biodiversity conservation actually is decreasing in astonishing speed. So what China can provide. In face of loss of biodiversity around the globe, human beings, no countries, they shared the same face. China always championed the concept of a harmonious between nature and the human, and we have emphasized different ways of biodiversity conservation, therefore achieved a great progress while maintaining a high speed of economic and social development. Talking about experience, uh, can be concluded in the four areas. First, we respect nature, putting protection as the top priority, we follow the a law of the nature and also go in line with the laws. And China also the first country to talk to mention about the a right line or the alarm line of protecting the a key animals, a key systems. And we play a key role in protecting the uh, habitat and also have done a great job in returning the land back to the grassland, wetland, and also establish different pilot projects in key areas. That is why we have seen the increasing number and areas of habitat for wild animals. And we also have our the firm resolve in fighting pollution, 
through ODs help to mitigate the pressure on biodiversity loss. And second, we emphasize a, a low carbon and a grain development and way of life and way of production. We put biodiversity conservation with other strategies such as the a strategy for rural revitalization. We always find out new ways to protect biodiversity while realizing that the a poverty eradication and we always value the uh, natural resources. We talk about the lucid water lush mountain are invaluable assets. And we always think about how we can leverage the strengths of diversity and also to draw the a more internal engines to power us going further in this regard. And also we have brain brought the biodiversity conservation as a national level strategy and also introduced the laws and regulations in this regard to provide the tools from the legal framework to deliver our tasks. And also we have embedded into our five-year plan. So we have a master plan aligned with other plans and also have laid out the action plan so our country can be guided by this action plan in the next five years and also uh, can be broke down to different places and regions to protect the biodiversity in the medium long term. And we also emphasize the global cooperation, especially the multilateral protection system. We always they perform the responsibility by utilizing the a bilateral and a multilateral platform such as South South Corporation. We provide the help to other countries in need and also the a strengthen the exchanges and communications of biodiversity conservation. By doing so, we can provide China's strengths and solution in this regard. Thank you. I've seen some cities establish their own team on biodiversity conservation. My question regarding the a spatial planning. So that's the territorial space planning. Thank you for your question. Uh, regarding all different kinds of territorial space planning, uh, under formulating. We have studied the rules and policies and the actions of biodiversity conservation. First, we should have a good layout of space planning, emphasizing on the areas for urban activities, for agriculture, and we focus on the, the genetic resources and also focus on whether that DA protection can be conducted at its origin or that should be protected at another place and also establish the a channel for the a mitigated birds and other animals and also establish the uh, off-site conservation system. We have accelerated the system for the uh, national resources, land resources production. And we have established more than 1,000 uh, national parks 
and the conservation sites. By doing so, we can provide the, a good foundation for the a rich species of the a biodiversity. And we also work on the restoring the a biodiversity. For example, in Shanghai, where the key places and the milestones, and they have the A21 national parks in Chengdu. I've also seen that the ACE Park in the city's land plan planning. So we would like to see the a harmonious between nature and a human. And we also have the a concept called the a right line of ecology, and we have the, our working priorities, and we have three right lines for the ecological function, the a natural resources protection sites, the a the fragile areas in terms of the a national resources protection, these are the a red lines, so we put a close eye in these three red lines. Boyan Lake, we talk about the Imagran Gort, birds, the a transferring routes. They also had a expert panel and for the ODA traveling routes, O included in the red line areas. Right now, in China, the right line covered a majority of the a cherished and also the a endangered animals' habitats, and also established the information system platform and monitoring platform, make sure that from the very beginning when we draw the plan, the biodiversity conservation is in our consideration and make sure that we have a uniform, we have one platform, one plan, one method to deal with the biodiversity situation and also for the a Territorial space planning, make sure that we have only one map that everyone follow. And also have the evaluation system. And also have the a alarming system available, as well as the a putting a set of indicators index, and it will also keep enriching the index and the indicator species. Thank you. The a Norse migrating elephants cases showed the a China's progress made in the a biodiversity conservation. Would you please introduce more regarding the wild animal protection and what's your plan going forward? Thank you for your attention. World animal protection, I believe, that draws everyone's attention. The CPC Central Committee and State Council have always touched great importance in protecting wild animals. General Secretary Xi has emphasized in different occasions regarding wild animal protection. We have done in the following six areas. First, Regarding law enforcement, we improve the a legal system and also the a supplementary system. We have 
He addressed two times our DA law on wild animal protection and also improve the DA wild animal catalog. And the first day of February this year, the State Council approved and released the newly amended wild animal protection catalog and 981 animals in total eight categories animals have been included, 686 land animals, and 189 in the first level, 474 in the second level, and these belong to our ministry. On the second, we have organized the, a countrywide monitoring work to learn the full picture about the wild animal. For the tigers and the ancient elephants, we can realize a live monitoring. And third, regarding the endangered and extinct animals, make sure that we have the breeding system and the capabilities available in place. Make sure that these animals will not go extinction. Force. We also crack down the illegal behaviors. And we have touched great importance in these areas and also have the stringent measures in law enforcement. So our administration worked with 70 ministries and departments. Establishing a team regarding the illegal hunting, killing the wild animals. And in recently, we have also established a team and different DA campaigns to crack down the illegal trade of the a category birds and wild animals. And also we focus on the a epidemic among the wild animals, and also we focus on the global cooperation, and also make our contribution to help countries in Africa. By doing so, China is also one of the eight key contributors in global communication. And we also work with other countries in the trading, illegal trading average. Have more details actually elaborated in the white paper. Talk about panda, the Asian elephants, the a crested ibis. We have a turned the a downward curve. Right now we have seen the curve going up. Now the wild number of elephants, 1,140 in 1980s to 1860 ancient elephants from 180 in 1985 to 300. The Etipatan antelope also increased to 300,000. This we talk about is the uh, wild animal numbers. I paid a visit to Tibet. We, we have uh, seen uh, the uh, wild animals, in including Tibetan antelope, uh, running inside our protective areas. I'm very glad to see these. The crested ibises, so just from seven 
to more than 5,000. The white crane also increased to 4,500 from 80. And also for the vervet spoonbills, there's an increase for the A black faces, the spoonbill also increased to more than 4,000. A large number of wild animals also return to nature going forward. Our administration will strictly implement the A decision and plan made by the Visa Central Community State Council, improve the A legal system and the focus on the import and exports of goods, and also control the alien species and also to deal with the conflict between nature and a human being and in order to realize a harmonious between nature, wild animal, and the human being. Thank you. One last question, please. China News Agency we talk about the a government playing a leading role in biodiversity conservation, and also a society also joined the whole campaign. Would you please talk about how you involve the society that joined the campaign? Thank you for your question. This issue related to each and every one of us. We talk about the biodiversity. This laid the, a solid material foundation for us. So we highly rely on the biodiversity. In face of biodiversity loss, we always put the protection of the biodiversity as one of our top priority, and we have seen that the government is taking the a driver's seats, and the whole public pitched in in this endeavor. We have established and also issued the a code of conduct for the public and other documents and policies, and also conducted the uh, different activities to educate the public regarding laws, regulations, policies in the area of biodiversity conservation. We also have the International uh, the, uh, Environmental Protection Day and the uh, UN Global Protection Day, and also different the uh, key milestones to bring more knowledge to the public and also to guide the localities to conduct different activities. At the same time, we also work closely with the media and use the new media, the social network, to bring the knowledge in different ways. Companies and agencies are also one of the key players in this drive. Through them, more knowledge can be conveyed to the public, so more people can get more understanding, knowledge, philosophy of biodiversity conservation, so we can see more people can join the campaign. Biodiversity conservation, and we can start from very small things to make our contribution to the macro goal. We talk about the a green, low-carbon way of life. We talk about that the a empty plant campaign and also uh, not buy and consume wild animal. 
We see a hub of AI, high technology, a data, big data center. There are different way and format for the public to join the biodiversity conservation drive. About COP15 very soon will be held. I also would like to call for everyone's participation. Either you join a project or you share a knowledge with your friends or family members regarding the biodiversity conservation. That's all your contribution, no matter it's a big one or a small one. All come together will be a mighty force. At the end of the press conference, thank you all. Bye for now.